Lights. Camera. Galley. And welcome back, folks, to Four Corners of the Galley. Totally binging. The show dedicated to binging television shows on any of your favorite devices. And on this episode, we're doing Narco Season 1, The Rewatch. It's now in its third season. It's moved on past some of its big topics, but I went back and checked out Season 1. I'm here to discuss it with you. So without further ado, let's kick it off. So, Narcos. You wondering to yourself, what's this show about? Thought that to myself the same time when I first saw it come up on Netflix. And it's basically a documentary-style television show that mixes original footage and actual footage with with the television show that they created, and it gigs deep into uh, drugs, drugs in in America and how it all started. And season one is the probably starts off with the most famous criminal of all time, the one that more rappers quote and more people wish they could be, Mr. Pablo Escobar. Yes, you heard me right. The cocaine king capital. The king of cocaine, my bad. <laughs> the man that started it all. Basically, the one that brought it into America. So this show is amazing. It really digs deep into the true nature of how cocaine started in Miami and basically how cocaine even started at all. I mean, it starts off with this individual, I guess, who worked in Peru, they call him Cockroach, and he um, figured out this drug that they're getting a uh, crazy high off of in, uh, in Chile, and he um, gets runs into the army of, his, of, the, of Chile, and they shut him down, but he somehow survives, and he hooks up with, of all people, Pablo Escobar, who at this time is a major trafficker. He, he smuggles things into Colombia, things out of Colombia. This is what he does. His is M.O. You first meet him. He's suave. He's exactly what you would think he is. And it is amazingly done. I mean, absolutely amazingly done. This is not your Vinny Chase entourage, Medellin, big fat suit looking funky. No. This is an actor that really took up the, took up the mantle and really dug in deep. And without further ado, I gotta say, Mr. Wagner Mora, who was in He's not that famous, but he was in Isalem. He was actually the hacker guy that helps out uh, Matt Damon's character get up to Isalem. He is actually Brazilian born and didn't speak Spanish, and he learned Spanish for this part. And he absolutely embodies Pablo Escobar from his just fear to the Robin Hood S member of the Colombian community that he basically help reshape Medellin at that time because at this point in Colombia he's considered like Robin Hood and then and they even talk about it they show live footage of his actual press conferences that happened in 1980 and it shows how he was beloved in the city so it's a, it's a great dynamic so basically this whole show starts off where you meet these two individuals you meet this <coughs> gentleman from America who's living in Miami at the time he's a DE agent uh, played by Boyd Holbrook who's amazing in this role uh, might not know him he's actually in Logan he plays the, one of the main villains in Logan he's very good up and coming actor I think he's also in the new Predators the Shane Black version so I'm interested to see that too he starts off as a DE agent and he basically explains his life and stories, and I don't want to get too deep because I want to make sure you see it. And he talks about how he felt that it was in his duty because when he started in the DEA in the 70s, they were chasing after just basically marijuana. And then all of a sudden, this influx of cocaine hit Miami, and it just flooded the streets. And it changed everything from that point forward. So this man, real-life person, took it upon himself because his father fought in, in World War II and, you know, took it up when we bombed, when we Pearl Harbor got bombed, he felt that it was his duty to go to Colombia and actually take it on head on. And, I mean, it's pretty amazing when you think about it that this man did this. And he goes down to Colombia and meets up with uh, Pedro Pascual's character, who's also DEA, who's uh, American-born in Texas, but is down in Colombia. And they go head on against the narcos. And at this point, it's Pablo Escobar. And season one is beautifully done because it is the rise and fall of Pablo Escobar. I mean, you see it all the way. I mean, this is a real life story. So let's just say without a fact, I'm not spoiling anything because you can look any of these things up because it basically intertwines real life into the movie, into the show. And at the end of this season, a uh, spoiler just in case, he pre-locks himself in jail and he escapes. So this goes from basically the creation of Pablo Escobar until he ends up in jail and he becomes a fugitive when he escapes on his own merit. That is literally the last scene and it sets it up for a beautiful season two, which we'll get to. But this one is basically the rise and fall of Pablo. I mean, this man was 
amazing and crazy altogether. He created this empire on fear and everything, but this man was extravagant beyond all beliefs, buying all kinds of stuff. He used to fly in animals from Africa, boats and all kinds of mansions and own things under the sun. And then when he ran out of places to do with his money, he started burying them all over the place. I mean, he was everything you ever heard about and more. He was ruthless and loving at the same time. I mean, he's crazy and you can see why a lot of these, uh, you know, premature gangsters or rappers love talking about because the man created an empire he was on the forbes list of richest men in the world and that's what got him caught up basically because they found out that these narcos were making way too much money it's an amazing story with some amazing acting um it's an absolutely beautiful show it is a lot of it is in Spanish because it is very true and to its roots in Colombia. So a lot of Spanish is spoken, so it's a lot of subtitles. So you do have to read some subtitles. But let me tell you, if you take the time and patience and watch this show, you will genuinely appreciate the production value and the acting and how amazing these people recreated real life and actually make you feel like you're in Colombia in the 80s during this crazy, crazy time when Pablo Escobar was king and ran that whole thing. I mean, it is a beautiful and crazy story all mixed into one. This is definitely a double thumbs up binge. I mean, this is a must see. Start with this one. It is beautifully done. I would say you would probably want to take a good five day binge. Give yourself two episodes per day because then you can really soak in what's going on and how you, how deep they go and how much corruption Pablo creates and how much uh, just how how badly these two sides fought against each other and the DA lost a lot I really don't want to ruin the story but just tell you that it is amazingly done you should watch it it's a beautiful story and it only gets better after that point so definitely a five day binge two episodes per day take your time read the subtitles enjoy what they're saying because it is absolutely a good show alright well I'd like to thank you for joining me on this totally binging narco season one rewatch until next time, guys. Good night, Ted. Thank you for watching Four Corners of the Galley. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and comment down below. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Um, outro. You, you, you tell them everything, crap? You saying everything? Yeah. You sure? Yes. Oh. Uh, uh, you sure? I don't oh know. Oh my God. What are you guys talking about? Get oh, out of here. Can I join the Oh well, yeah, she's trying to, trying to do a video, but I don't know if she said everything. Can you get out? Hey, listen. Did hey, you say to like, comment, yeah, subscribe, yeah, and share? Yeah. Yes. Did you sure. say thank you for watching? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Get out! Uh -huh.